we're going to look at doing some easy, non-destructive sci-fi details. So these are pipes or edges or uh, features that you can quickly reproduce and edit without locking in all of your changes. Uh, and they're also dead easy to do, uh, except for easy to do, I think. So let's have a, let's have a crack at them. So we'll start with a new scene. And we don't need a cube. Obviously we don't need a cube. Uh, we'll keep the light for now. Uh, so we're going to leave the cursor in the world origin. If it's not there for any reason, shift S and cursor to world origin. And then we're going to create a plane. What we want is a single vertex. Now, there is a single vertex add-on that you can get uh, for Blender, but not everyone's got it installed. So the easiest way to do that is to go tab into edit mode in the vertex select, make sure you've got all of these selected, hit M for merge and at the center, and then a single vertex. So if we then hit E to extrude, I'm sure it's not a YouTube that says that a lot. Oh, here it is. So I'll extrude that vert along, and I'll extrude up on the X, and Z even so, and I'll extrude along on the Y. So I'll make a kind of cubic S shape, and I'm going to select all of these vertices using the A key, and then choose bevel, and drag, and as it'll happen, and this little box at the bottom, click the expand arrow, and on the vertices, we're going to bring this to about there, so it's going to be a little sci-fi type corner. Then we're going to select these vertices again, and do exactly the same process. And what I want to do is bring these tighter in, and then increase the curve, so it gives a little curved edge to that sharp edge, if that makes sense. So, this is going to be our path, so we're going to convert that to a curve. Um, Control F2, I'm going to rename it to, uh, sorry, just the F2 button. Uh, we're going to rename it to uh, Pipes Path. Okay, so we can ignore this for now. And then we're going to tab around to the square on view. And I'm going to do the same thing again, I'm going to make a plane, rotate it, scale it down. And what we want is we actually just want a quarter of this pipe. So if you select these vertices, so plane. So we've just got the one vertice, and then let's bring it somewhere around here. And hit E, and you're going to draw the shape of the pipe or the trunking or the the curve edge that you want. So this will make a bit more sense once we put some parts in. Let's do something like this. It needs to terminate on the center line here. And then click back here and hit E again to extrude. I'm just going to do this freehand, you can be super precise and use, use your different uh, constraints to access tools, but I'm not too worried about this. Uh, I'll do. So we're going to add a mirror modifier to create the other side and make sure clicking is turned on. So what this will do is automatically merge any vertices together. So let's just, yeah, we we'll join that, that's good. And then we're going to create a second one on top of it. So that will be on the Y axis. Again, make sure clipping's turned on. Just check that's aligned, okay. Select all, and then extrude along the Y axis. We've got a nice length of trunking uh, and it's all non-destructive so if I was to decide that okay I don't actually like where this vertice is I could move it up change the shape but I'll leave it where it is for now so we're then going to put a loop cut in here control R use the bevel tool if bevel isn't already selected it's up on this side there drag out a length of section here and then extrude normals so we're going to create a little bit Insert and then let's do the same thing again. Oh, I like things to be a bit off center. And so let's try extruding our normals again. Okay. 
So let's do one more section here and we'll extrude out for this. Okay, I'm just gonna move myself to the other side of the screen so you can see my modifier stack. And we're gonna put a bevel on it just to smooth things over. So the default doesn't look too bad, but you need to turn on uh, auto smooth, which is hidden in the normals there. And I click and set shade, set shade smooth. And then in the bevel, if you go down to geometry, at the moment it's limiting itself to not override the normals, not create any horrendous sort of crunched polygons. Turn off clamp overlap, it will disable that. And you can see now we've got a 10 centimeter bevel, which is way too much for what we need. So just keep dragging it down until we've got a little bit of an edge detail. And also in shading, we're just going to choose hard and normals and that should fix any other issues. So we'll just move this up a little bit. So that seems to be about the limit of what we can do. Okay, so the next step, we'll just hide these to give themselves a bit of space. So now we need to get this along this path. So the first thing we need to add is an array modifier. And we're going to set the factor to minus one. And then if we just up the count, you can see that it's creating a seamless repetition. If we hit the merge, we'll then merge the vertices at the end of each section. So it's still seamless. And then we need to add a curve modifier. So that noise, some kind of building work going on outside. Uh, and then if we click on the path, so you tend to get some funky results, and you can see it's heading in the wrong direction here. So it's case of clicking through these and working out which one it is. Interesting, not this one. It's almost always the last one you choose. There we go, that's the fellow. So you can see that it's following along the path. And increase it to the length of the pipe. And there we go, we've got a kind of nice seamless sci-fi path. And um, because it's non-destructive, if I hit the tab key, you can go back and I want to change any part of the design. I can do, so maybe it's not, let's, for example, say it's not wide enough. So we can just pick up these segments here. Make sure you're in transparent mode as you're picking up everything. And then we can increase the width of the pipe. If we go back, it's all applied across the so we've now got a wider detail. Let's just name this one, so wide pipe. We can then duplicate this. And let's say we wanted to create a different shape to follow that path. So we go back to the segment here, and I'm just going to turn off my way so I can see what I'm doing. Let's Delete everything and go back to let's go to the transparent mode though, so we actually pick up what we want. Okay, and then if we click into the side view, so we can completely change the shape. Um, I mean I'm not super inspired as far as our options, but let's let's try making something Let's apparently make the Batman logo. Uh, we can add some curves into this. So you can mess about with it as much as you want. Make sure this is a great shape, but it's different, it's different enough. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing, so turn off transparency mode, extrude the edge on the line. So we've got a different kind of pipe now, I think. I think it's also big, let's make this one smaller. So back into transparency, back into the Let's it down, open here. Okay, and if we turn on our array modifier and we change the path to this one, we've got a 
second second pipe. So this is you can change all of these things. So if you wanted a bit, a bit of variation in your pipe, like if you wanted this one to not be at the same height, you can just select the verses, bring it down, or you could continue it up. And if you then just increase the count. Now it should follow the curve, but for some reason this isn't working. So if you choose fit curve, it should follow the length. Um, if you can tell me why that's not doing it in the comments, that would be very useful. So you've got a completely kind of modifiable, changeable pipes. Uh, let's add, okay, let's add some materials to this. So first thing I'm going to change this in cycles. If you've got the option, choose GPU compute because it'll use a graphics card. And if we just turn on denoise in the viewport, and then if you have easy HDRI, let's turn that on. If you don't have it, it's definitely worth getting. It just makes setting up. That's all of the hard work of setting up your nodes for you. Okay, and then it will bring in this lovely, in my case, railway background, which we don't want. Uh, so let's turn that off. If you go to uh, the camera and then down to film. The camera, it's probably got a proper name. Transparent. Okay, so we've got HDR set up. Create a new material, make it metallic. Bring the base color down. Bring the roughness up. And let's do a similar thing here. Uh, up the metallic. Bring the roughness up. Let's bring the metallic up. And the left must stay happy with it. And one more thing I'd like to do before we wrap this up is everything replicates in the array so let's choose let's select this loop here so do select loops edge ring and then choose face and then if we then select more we make a new material output let's give it a kind of blue tint so the emission is 10 and then you just need to make sure you click to sign in those faces and you can see that that glowing light is replicated across the pipe so that's a little trick to make that more visible uh, if you go to geometry nodes not geometry nodes compositing click use nodes and if we just add in a glare node in between, change that to fog glow. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to bring down my bring the time limit to five seconds. And if it goes camera view, that camera to view, so we can position it where we want. Now let's set it to set it to an Instagram friendly. Uh, square. See what we got. Uh, apparently, we get a spinning crash wheel. Okay, just rebuilt that scene. Uh, Okay. Right. So, very simple technique, but you can build limitless shapes and they are not destructible, so you can go and change things around, play around with it as much as you want. Okay, have fun.